With the new E4 DLC around the corner and with 1.35 as well fast incoming, I think it's time that we check out the best version of Persia since we're not getting any Persia revamp in the next DLC. We're gonna be playing as the Antebellum Persians and we're gonna be doing the Nestorian Persians, the best Persians there are because everybody knows if you don't go Nestorian, then why are you even playing this game? Come on, man. This video was paid by the Nestorian Foreign Affairs Ministry ministry convert or be crucified that that's the motto that's just the motto i had to say the motto i'm sorry that's that's just how it is so we have a little bit of a backstory here to the nation of merv the primary nation if you're gonna be going nestorian as the persians i'm gonna do a good favor here and i'm not gonna read this so that you can read it yourself we got a early access notification as well since this is an early access by the way so if when i release the video it's not out yet don't blame me just be patient okay you'll find a link to the mod in the description just use that whenever it's ready and download it for yourself i'm recording this very very early before it's released so keep that in mind now check out this amazing mission tree here one of my favorite mission trees for the persians there's so many flavorful options so many rewards like for example a modern government gives until the end of the game expand administration minus 25 and governing capacity flat 150 you also advance diplotech by one level once you build the academy of gondashipur and so on there's a ton of amazing modifiers here and we can even unlock the immortal infantry that's right we're reviving the immortals as the persians right over here revival of the immortals till we get to that point though we got to do first gondi shah which is going to give us a general with 35 tradition now to do this we need to have one of the followings either 100 force limit manpower 100 or an army equal to 20,000. So that means we just need to go up to 3,000 more units that's not too difficult let's do our estate first actually plus one mana privilege is always a must no matter what the freaking game if you can get it definitely get it let's check our air we don't have an air so we can give out the patronage of the arts directly seize the crownlands summon the diet as well all the good schnapple dupe get a claim from that mission noise let's see what our economy looks like we actually are in the plus so let's go ahead and get the indebted to the that's uh that's uh pure iranian right there in case you didn't know i i'm fluent in iranian and let's also give out supremacy over the crown and religious diplomats so we got good relations with our fellow nestorians all around us here let's actually check how many nestorians there are looks like some of the hordes are nestorian that is absolutely a jose oh they're a tributary of the state of yuan now guys i also made this video because i really want to address something as you probably know there's some political instability going on in iran right now where there is certain revolts going on against the government which has been oppressing women and has been leading the country with an iron fist let's say and if there's any iranian people watching right now i want you guys to know that you're all absolutely amazing stay strong and better times are coming also because you are an eu4 player just so you know you're definitely on a watch <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're not on a watch list. Not that I know of. All right, come on. They totally did not put all EU4 Iranian players on a watch. That that's not happening. Come on, it's not happening. I promise. Hello. Yes, yes. I told them you. They're not on the watch list. No, it's okay. It's okay. They don't know. They don't. Know. Oh my God, dude! You have 27 development in the province of Marv, 13 in Harev, and eight in Sadak. Okay, that is insane. And we also have the Fortress of Merv, which is giving us right now global military advisor costs, national garrison growth, and defensiveness locally, as well as attrition for enemies in the three provinces. Well, in the state provinces, that is. So that's four provinces, none of which we own except the capital. So we got to do that. Let's see if we have any cores around, actually. No cores, but we did get the uh, claims from that uh, estates mission. So there's something going for us, right? The cool part is that because there's a lot of Zoroastrians around, we will have an easier time with aggressive expansion because we can just dodge aggressive expansion between Mahayanas here, Zunists, Zoroastrians, Nestorians, and Manich Man Manichians. Wow. Okay, that's a... I don't think I've ever seen any mod add this particular type of uh, Christianity, is it? I'm actually not sure if it's christianity or if it's a different type of zoroastrianism i'll be honest it does sound like a christian religion doesn't it manichian let me know in the comment section if you know more about this than i do we are going to be getting our rivals going to go with gore first since we will be attacking gore fairly early on let's also go for the uh mithra needs right at their doorsteps also and the chaparids since of course we will be uh munching into shapur very very shortly let's also get our mercenary units whilst we're at it the free company the one and only 
and let's get some allies up next. Let's see who we can ally. I also like the fact that they've added the uh, improved interface here where you actually see all the, well, more nations instead of just a few when you uh, click the diplomatic screen. Well, the macro builder in general, right? So it looks like nobody wants to ally us. Surely might want to ally us if we improve relations with them a little bit or something like that because they're also Nestorians. Yeah, we're very, very close with them actually. So we might get them as an ally. Let's uh, let's send the diplomat there right now to improve relations then. And because we got the uh, free company, we also got the general with 35 tradition. He's not bad. 2, 3, 1, 1. Pretty decent overall. Just realized I actually need to get my uh, claims on Gore. I do have humiliation against them though. Mm. Oh, I got the Unite Persia CB. I forgot about this one. These guys are allied to Ishampur. All right, they got 7,000 units. You know what? I feel like that's an easy war. Let's go for that. Gotta wait until the 11th of December. Damn it, I didn't pause in time. I waited till 12th of December. Oh, well, it is what it is. Can I cobbledrate these guys? I can. Let's go. Looks like a fairly easy initial war against them. I have to say that I really enjoy the icons that they added in here for the uh, advisors. They look super, super Persian, especially this guy over here, Narsik Kang. He really reminds me of uh, a certain character from uh, Mad TV. I don't know if uh, there's any Mad TV enjoyers in the in the in the chat here but totally reminds me of that guy you know who i'm talking about don't you all right just uh five a mere 575 days and we got this let's go ahead and uh attack him over in mashad i'm also improving with surenas and kaya zinads because i need to get two allies and it looks like i'm able to ally them after i finish my war in order to get the prince of persia mission that offers me a lot of claims all around the uh, persian lands all right we definitely need to recruit more units because <laughs> we lost most of our troops already actually let me see if i can get any mercenary units any of these bad boys have any siege pips in them three siege pips for the bukhara band hails to the yama boys let's get them shara pits declared on gore wait who should oh no they're gonna take my neighbor gore oh no i wanted to attack gore without gore all we have is border gore <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry i've been watching too much marvel movies i do like the um persistence of these uh mithranids here despite me sieging down the rest of the country they still are trying to take back their capital at least they're trying to recruit units here as well they do have a very serious fighting spirit i guess i don't know i'm still gonna kill them all do they just get a nine dice roll holy mother of god they got saved from that battle because they got a nine dice Roll, bra moment, right? That's proper E4 moment, sir. Wait, what? What? <laughs> Who am I fighting here? Ishpavav. They got. How do they have so many units? When the snaps. Oh my god, I just lost against these bad boys. Oh, you know what? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna piece these boys out. I cannot fully annex them. Wow. How about if I give you guys white piece? No. Oh, dang it. Now I gotta recruit more units again. Let's uh, do this first so we can recruit more mercenaries and get more Aloniums. The Crimean Rebellion. The Crimeans have chosen war. Oh no. Wait, were they like um, a tributary of the golden horde i guess they were if you guys are not familiar with antebellum by the way it's an alternate history mod in which uh europe's gone a very different path here with francia which is kind of like france but better uh, being the actual hre emperor and then we have styria bohemia lombardia saxony and the other boys as the uh, electors you know this kind of makes me wonder though how come me as persians i know everything that's going on in europe including all the way into scotland and even denmark in parts of Norway, but I don't know what's going on right next to me in China and Southeast Asia. I should have that map knowledge, shouldn't I? I feel like we should be getting that map knowledge, sir. Well, I did pull the old uh, Uno reverse card, and by starting to siege down their capital, did I just spit on my microphone? I think I did. I am disgusting. By starting to spit on their micro, uh, by starting to siege down their capital, I uh, I can do a white piece. I cannot take any money, but I'm good with the white piece. Annexation show these bad boys, and we doubled in size the great part though is that this is probably the best area here development wise look at all this juicy dev that we just managed to get doubling in size now economically speaking anyway all right we got uh, two alliances one with rob another one with uh, suranas as consequence we can do the prince of persia mission that gives us permanent claims on all provinces in persia as well as Khorasan. so look at our map now absolutely amazing i probably should have cored this before <laughs> i should have waited 
hit it with the coring. Let's do this now. And of course, the Shaperids actually cucked me massively, taking all of Border Gore here and preventing me from even uh, reaching my goals here of uh, Rob ing this province of Rob. <laughs> That was the last one. Last one, I promise, okay? Come on. On the bright side, we can still expand in the Sassanid lands whilst we, um... Well, we tried to grow a little bit, I guess. The Shepherds are pretty darn massive now, so there's that, right? Also, beefing up the amount of mercs I got. Actually, maybe I can attack the Sassanids. No! Oh, my God! They have 30... 41... Th oh, God, no. Yeah, okay. Change of plans, boys. <laughs> Looks like we're gonna be expanding in the north in Gurgan. Or even we can expand into, um into Turkestan because that way it's gonna lead us to the Mogulistan lands which are Nestorian and we have very few of our very own Nestorian land sadly only two provinces right now we got to get more Nestorians and most of the Nestorians are in the Horde lands not in Persia for that matter you know it's not not bueno at all here if you're an Nestorian at least of course Gherkin's gonna be attacking Ishpahad's now that I destroyed Ishpahad's army why wouldn't they right why would they not take advantage of it right I'm gonna wait for them to actually lose lose some of their units in the war against the Ishpavads and then I'm gonna tag work on myself and we also just got an alliance with the Injuids we do have uh, the common enemies here of uh, Shaparids so that will come in handy in the future when we do start our war against Shaparids can take a while though they have a massive army compared to me right now I really wish the road system was something available in the base of 4 game like I'm gonna be starting to build a lot of roads around my country obviously which will eventually get upgraded into gravel roads royal roads and eventually into railroads there's also a lot of ministries that have unique bonuses here that we can build up later once we have the money and the technology for it and we can even get diplo relations and reputation these were basically buildings that were around in eu3 this system changed later down the line in eu4 i really like the system more and i i hope something like this will happen once eu5 gets announced you know at the base game i hope it has it yeah i took some loans so i can uh build one of my railways i'm gonna do it sorry roads i'm gonna build it in my capital of course and that's it. I don't want to take too many more loans because, you know, until I expand a little bit more economically, we're not really doing amazing right now. Well, we will be doing actually once I finish coring this province and I can lower the autonomy in these juicy high development provinces, though. Oh, we have an Ein Air. Let's face it, guys. This man is definitely not a typical Persian man. So we're going to give him an atypical Persian name. Yetius Windowius. Because, no, no particular reason. We're, no particular particular reason we're giving him this name not sure how z kids also managed to get uh those lands here when they were at war with the gurgans but i'm not gonna complain about it you know i actually just noticed that shaparids don't have that many units they only have twenty-eight thousand. and if i call in injurids and rob we might be able to actually rob some of their provinces <laughs> Ah, uh, all them Romanian jokes get really old really fast, don't they? But I'm still making them because I know you're, you're going to comment saying that they get really old really fast. This way I get my engagement. Everybody wins, especially my engagement. Okay, that's what's going on here. I'm also doing it to trigger you mostly because I know, I know, I know who you are. I know what you're thinking right now. And you know what? I don't give a snaps. Let's unite Persia, shall we? Let's unite them. Probably going to die tonight. Let me get some more mercenaries, more loans. All right, this should be enough. Uh... Let's make full cores out of this. I forgot to do that, actually. Oh, I forgot to also lower the autonomy, for that matter. Big brain, right there. And let's get the Kazakh company, which I cannot get. Never mind. Let's get the Bedouin. I cannot get any mercenaries. Really, right now? More loans? Turkomans don't really have great uh, siege pips, though. But I will get them, because they're actually pretty decent. Let's go with the Turkomans. Oh, boy. More loans incoming. This is a very loan-friendly playthrough right here. Ah, yes. Of course. Focus all your armies on Rob, just like a very smart AI should do. I do feel like I'm gonna be the first one to get my fort before they get uh, Bamiyan, actually. 14% compared to zero. And of course, we also got rebels all of a sudden because we're just swimming in manpower. Bro, how the F do they go from 0% to 21% in one tick? Are you actually shitting me right now? This is not even fair, dude. I hate this game. Good old Injuids here be uh, besieging down with me, so glad to see that. Doesn't feel like I'm fighting by myself here. Not like those bad 
bastards and Rob over here. They're not doing anything. Well, come on. 42% now, really? Well, I guess I'm at 42% as well, so let's see how it goes. Of course, 2% uh, professionalism, but I get more expensive unit. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got a gift from the Sassanids. Hello. And we also just got this city, so that's awesome too. Is this their capital? No, I don't think so. Where is their capital? Boom. Oh, snaps. It's all the way in the south. Ooh, that's gonna take a while to take. I'm gonna try and uh, take out uh, Zakirid's army if I can, as long as they're far away from Shaparid's main army. And it looks like we might be able to stack wipe them. Yep, they did not get... Whoa, no! No, oh, that's Rob. Okay. I thought the, the southern Persians just peaced out. That would have been really, really bad for me. All right, you know what? Let's uh, let's try and attack him here. I'm also uh, gonna be piecing out the uh, Zikids by occupying their lands here. We got 45 to 36, so that means we can get this white piece right now. I don't need to take the forts because I just need to focus on Shaparids, basically. I spit on my microphone again. What is wrong with me today, man? All right, looks like we've converted more lands to our amazing religion. Let's just convert even more lands now. And Zikids just insulted us. They say our arrows will blot out the sun. What? Anyway, moving on. Uh, that must be a tribal thing. I've, I've got no clue what's going on here. But we did take the capital, and by we, I mean my allies. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to take advantage of that, and I'm going to take lands from them and not give my allies anything as consequence because they didn't really do much in this war, did they? Look at that. Why are you upset, Injuids? Why are you upset? You didn't even try, did you? Admit, you didn't even try. So I could probably go for 100%, couldn't I? 119 uh, and minus 82. I could could also take more lands actually but i also want to take a lot of money from them let's go maximum 172 yeah how much is this gonna go to the my allies though i'm only getting 86 no really bruh that doesn't seem very fair does it but you know what sometimes you gotta give in order to win because look at this big bad merv that we have here and we have a looming bankruptcy as well <laughs> Uh, why do I have the economy of a potato? That's the big question. Well, now, now, boys, we're going to be chilling and fixing our economy before we go completely bankrupt. Uh, don't worry. It's not as bad as it seems. All right. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine, boys. Let's get some new Rivalski, Turkestan, Sassanids. Eh, let's go with the Turks, Turkestanis. All right. So let's see what's going on here. Can we actually concentrate show any of these lands? We cannot. No problem. No problem. We're going to start coring the smallest, work our way up to the biggest admin points wise looks like we can core everything okay next we're gonna kill the rebels and after we kill the rebels we're gonna get rid of most of our mercenaries recruit regular units and that should fix most of our problems actually all right looks gucci to me my boys looks gucci to me oh no they broke alliance why are you why are you mad bro it's only game all right the next thing we need to do is recruit a lot of infantry because if our neighbors decide to attack us we're dead we're, de we're done we're really done actually no for that matter matter I, I i committed boo boo no 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 i'm not gonna recruit these guys yet i need to actually first hold on to this money use it to pay off my older loans that's what i need to do first looks like we can take up to 20 loans and we have 21 so we're gonna pay off a couple of these bad boys or one of these bad boys debase currency once also we have to do it there you go i'm actually gonna debase currency two times we're gonna have a little bit of corruption here but it is what it is and now we can take 102 loans which means we're gonna take the burger Burger loans once more, one percent interest loans. We're gonna pay off the four percenters essentially. There you go. I should fix our economy eight tiny little bit we got 12 loans now and uh, can go up to 20 so we can actually get a few more loans pay off some of the older ones again recycle this again and again and then uh, the main goal is that we also can get some money to um they got only eight loans now nine loans so we can have an extra 11 loans so we can get the money that we have to uh, recruit the troops because if we don't recruit these guys our neighbors will attack us and destroy the schnapps out of us that's a given basically now i know what you were saying yo ludi you got five corruption i know no, trust me but don't worry about it it's better have five corruption and don't go bankrupt when you have 80 overextension and no army than not have five corruption and get annexed by your neighbors this is basically one of the most standard looty games ever we got three admin tech and five military and diplo totally happens one in five games not even what am i kidding here two in three games it happens if you've seen my uh muscovy playthrough that i'm doing on uh, twitch live in the past few days and it's still going on i i'm like three techs behind compared to my military tech and boom shnagadong dong bogong bong long oh ludi making up words again boy yep 
Yep, yes I am, sir. There you go. We did that. Now it means we can also lower the autonomy to all of these juice lands. And look at this, boys. After we lower the autonomy, look how much economy we're getting. Look how stronger we got right afterwards. We got to get some new rivals, Sassanids, and sure, Jai Rids, whatever. So let's get more units. Need more money. No problem. We can take up to 33 loans now instead of 20 because we just grew it massively economically. So with Anbinar, there are some new government reforms, obviously, and some changes one thing i have to say though is like uh here placate the great houses in my opinion shouldn't give this reform uh here because military free policies is irrelevant in the 1450s 1460s which is most likely when you would be getting this because you're not gonna have any policies unlocked as it is in this very early stage of the game so i would totally change this with literally anything else or put this later down the line if you want to get the free policies as your eighth government reform if you ever watch this uh per million and we're also gonna go in our case for the national manpower because of course i i do enjoy a little bit of manpower to use in my conquests all right let's uh convert eos maximos set up the um religious uh, unity edict holy snaps did i just see that properly damn that's a lot of new uh edicts man holy snips gold the Completion chance modifier minus 25, province governing costs, prosperity growth, settler increase, shipbuilding time, maximum attrition, and attrition for enemies. That's really cool, man. See, this is why I really love the modding community. There's so much flavor that you can actually get from mods to this game, and the game is so moddable, let's say, you know, that it just gives it infinite amount of hours that you can actually play the game for, truly. It's something that I don't see happening with some of the more recent PDX games, not gonna give out any names in particular, but... <laughs> Victoria 3. Uh, the point is that um, I really hope whenever EU5 comes out that the same system and model of EU4 is going to be the one that's going to be implemented rather than a oversimplified newer version of this game. And of course, we got more rebels here than in the entirety of our country. How? This also doesn't make sense. I wish they changed this. Imagine having 13,000 rebels pop up every few years when your entire army is 13,000. You know, rebellions don't have that many weapons to arm such a massive army you know that right <laughs> i wish rebellions were not as huge as they freaking are right now all right let's catch them whilst they're sieging down the fort this way we can easily kill them off and daria go now we can bring our boys back home oh what synth just took parts of surinats wow that means if i vassalize surinats i can feed them back these two provinces nine and seven development not bad whatsoever actually curious to see what's going on in europe let's check this place out andalusia is still massive francia is again still massive they still the emperor yes they sure are led by Suzanne of Borbo. Whoa, whoa, Patsangato. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. I really have been playing way too much Tarkov. Been saying random scav words every five seconds. <laughs> IRL, bro, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> Do we have any cheeky breakies in the chat that know what I'm saying here? Or am I just talking to myself again? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm always talking to myself while it's recording, but you know, you know what I mean. Come on. Interesting to see uh, Lithuania significantly small on the map from the beginning. And okay, looks like Golden Horde just completely wiped out the Crimeans, which had a rebellion earlier, if I remember correctly. Bulgaria also still doing pretty good. Byzantium took back some of his lands, if I'm not mistaken. They had a rebellion in the south of Greece and they killed off Maria. Nicaea is still around. Culturally speaking, the Turks did not fully take over all of Anatolia, at least in this alternate uh, timeline, right? And also the Turks are in the same culture group as the Kazakhs, Turkmeni, Uzbeks, Kyrgyz. I guess it does make sense in this time frame for them to be closer, culturally speaking, to those areas than the Middle East, really. I have to say, though, like, uh, the Armenian disposition is super accurate, though, like not even for an alternate timeline there were still some armenians in the adana area tarsus area obviously not that many but still some during the 1400s 1500s even also i'm not sure if there were any changes done to india just yet i think this might be uh, changed in the future since uh as far as i know this particular patch only uh redoes the uh, persian areas and the uh, horde areas india and the uh, asian ports the rest of the asian ports are going to be done in a few future patch if i'm not wrong if i'm wrong correct me in the comment section I, I appreciate that you guys should really try out antebellum it's seriously one of the most flavorful mods and really a breath of fresh air compared to the standard e4 
And it's also almost the same the way that you play it. You know, it's not major mechanic changes or anything of the sort. It's just a different scenario that's equally enjoyable and with a lot of unique missions and stuff, right? So there's that. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, check out this awesome Ottomans video until the next time. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 